video, I'm going to teach you an illusion that was inspired by Mary Poppins. Ever since I was a kid, I've always been intrigued by that scene where Mary Poppins appears to pull things out of her carpet bag uh, seemingly from nowhere. And so this is an illusion that tries to recreate that effect, but there are no camera tricks and no computer generated graphics. It's all just an illusion that you can build yourself. What you're gonna need are pieces of cardboard here. This is just cardboard that uh, came from an Amazon shipping package. And all I did, I wanted to add a little color, so I just uh, cut out some, glued some paper on here and then cut it out. Um, but you can also paint it or you can just leave it the cardboard color if you like. Now, what are the dimensions of these three squares? And we also have two supporting uh, pieces of cardboard here. Well, the secret to this whole thing is, oh, and by the way, uh, later on I'm gonna show you how to make this box uh, using origami. Uh, you don't have to use the box, but it's just one that you can make out of any piece of paper. Uh, for your trick, uh, if you happen to have like a little coin purse or maybe a little jewelry box that you wanna use, you can, but just to warn you, for the trick, you're gonna have to cut a hole inside of this box or whatever it is you use. So this origami uh, box here is very convenient and it's something you can easily cut a hole in and adapt for the trick. So I will be teaching you step by step how to make that later in the video. Secret to this whole thing is a mirror. And this is what drives the size of these pieces of cardboard here. So first of all, if you're gonna make this trick for a kid, Please don't use glass, because obviously it'll shatter. It's very uh, uh, prone to breaking. So um, what I've done here is this is just cardboard. Again, uh, shipping package from Amazon. And I have some stickers that I was able to procure that create a mirror. So they're just stuck on here and it's just a piece of cardboard. I understand that there are plastic mirrors you can buy. And um, I guess from what I understand, you can buy them at hobby stores and you can cut them to the size you like. You can also use a stainless steel, highly polished stainless steel mirror. But once you have your mirror, this will drive the size of your pieces of cardboard. So we're going to use this one as an example of the size. But what you're going to do is you're going to create a square based on your mirror. So let me show you how to do that. You're going to hold your mirror diagonally across a square just like this and this dimension here corner to corner with the mirror will determine the dimensions of your square so once you have that then you're ready to cut out your cardboard three pieces of cardboard here and these are the dimensions as mentioned earlier corner to corner with the uh, based on the mirror here. Now this piece here is square and I've cut out a hole in the back half of the card and it'll be quite apparent once I show you uh, as I put this all together. These two here are uh, the same size as this one here. The difference is what I did was I want people to be able to look inside uh, through these squares. So I have just used, created a half inch border here and then cut out the middle of the square. So I have two of these. And these two are just pieces of cardboard that will act as support. Let's start with the piece that has the hole in it. And if you like, you can attach your mirror and then put the hole in it. But the mirror goes in diagonally. That's why you measured it that way. And remember that the shiny side goes on the opposite side of where the hole is. So let's uh, use some tape and connect that together. Don't worry at this point if it doesn't stand up. The main thing is you're just uh, attaching it at this point. And these other pieces will act as support. So let's attach them.
At this point, you can see that I have something of a box here with the mirror inside. And given the right lighting and the right placement, it looks as if there's an empty box here. But of course, there is a mirror inside that's reflecting back on the front pieces here. And we'll show you how to do the trick, but let's finish the rest of the box here by adding our supports in. So now you've created your box. So you have a mirror running here. You have the piece with the hole in it on the top. That's your essentially the top of the box here and has the hole right there towards the back. That's just past the diagonal point here. So whatever goes through here will go behind the mirror, which is the secret to the trick. Two panels in the front with cutouts, as explained earlier. And finally in the back, just two pieces of cardboard that will act as a support. So just helps to support the box. Let's talk about the origami box. Now, as mentioned earlier, you can use any box or small coin purse. And if you have a big mirror, you can make a big giant box. Uh, but for purposes here, if you use a box, you're gonna have to have something that has a hole in it, which is why I think this origami box works very well for this trick. Because all you need is a piece of paper. I'm gonna give you the instructions now on how to make this box. Here's how to make this an origami box. Something my grandmother taught me, and I'm just gonna show it to you step by step. All you need is a square piece of paper, and of course adjust the paper to the size of the box that you're using. So I'm using this box here, and I want a box that's gonna look something like this on top. So with the square piece of paper, what you're gonna do is fold it diagonally, touch the corner. At this point, we're just trying to get creases. Fold it in half again. Unfold it. And you now have creases you can use as guidelines. So, take the far corner, place it into the middle, and fold. Gonna repeat all four corners. You have this, the four corners of the square, all in the middle. Now, you're gonna take these and place them face down and then fold this in half. Crease it down. Now take this and fold this in half. And you'll have a triangle. Now those of you who know how to make the crane origami will understand this next part. It's a little confusing to a lot of people first time in origami. Well, what you're going to do is you have this triangle and you're going to open it up. Now, you'll notice that there's an opening here and an opening here. So this is what uh, I want you to do. I want you to place your fingers inside of this fold here and then push and Close it up and form it into a square. Don't worry, I'll do that again with the other sides. We're gonna do both sides. Those of you who are familiar with the crane are familiar with this uh, fold. All right, so now I have a square on one side. I have the triangle on the other side, remained uh, just a remnant of the last fold. All right, so once again, triangle. Take your fingers, place it inside of the fold, and open it up, and push it down to make a square. So hopefully you're with me, just rewind the 
B video if you need to go back and look at that again. Now, you notice we have a square and I'm gonna hold it like a diamond and you want the open side up, not the folded side. So make sure that you can open this here. Now, you'll notice that there is a square here and you can open this up. It's a very, sim a very similar fold to what we did in the last step. You're gonna take your fingers, place it inside of the square, and then open it up. And this time it opens up into a triangle. Same with the other side, you turn it over. You'll see the uh, diamond here and you'll see that there is a, there's an opening here. So once again, place your fingers into the opening, open it up, expand it. And now crease it down into a rectangle. We should have something that looks like this. We're almost there. Now what you're going to do is you're going to turn and just fold it this way. So once again, you're here, you turn, and then you fold these on both sides this way. So on both sides, you, know, you should have something that looks like this now. Now for the last step, you're going to take this edge and you're going to fold it to the center and you're going to do this on all four sections where you can do this. So fold that in, turn it over and do the same thing on the other side. So fold that in, fold that in, should have something that looks like this. We're almost there. Take this flap, there's two flaps here. So just take the top one, fold that down. Like that, turn it over and you're gonna fold this one down. And if you stayed with me, you can take these two and open it up and you have a box. You're gonna to have to cut out the bottom here. So here's the easiest way. What I did was I just took a marker and then I took the marker. Remember, spectators aren't gonna look inside of this box because otherwise they would see the secret. So what you do is just take your marker and draw the square then what you do is unfold this. You have just a piece of paper here. But when you unfold this, you'll get back to your first original piece of paper and then you'll see your outline that you did with your marker. You can cut that out and then refold it with the hole back into this. I imagine there is a way that you could somehow cut this out as, as it stands in the box. I just felt like it was cleaner to unfold it and then cut it out and then refold it. So that's up to you. All right, let's get to the next step. At this point, you're going to attach your box to the other box. Now remember, you have that hole here, you have the hole here, and you want those holes to line up. So you can just use a little tape here and secure this box on top. So let's do that. There, with this box taped in place on top of the other box, you're ready to perform the trick. So once again, you have your box, you have your mirror, you have your other box on top, and the holes are lined up. To 
perform the trick, here's what you do. You take what you're going to produce. In this case, I'm just going to take, produce this marker. I want something that is obviously way too big for the box, this little box here. So beforehand, before anybody's looking, you just load this in, just like that. And you're ready to perform the trick. You don't really have to say anything about the box. You just uh, have the box here. If you want, you can uh, close these lids here and open them. But all you do is just wave your hand, snap your finger, reach in and pull out an impossible object that could not have fit inside of the box. few tips when performing this trick. First of all, be very careful that when you are performing the trick, you don't put your hand behind or any object behind the prop here because anything behind there disappears, as you can see. It's supposed to look as if you're viewing through the box um, and if you put anything behind it, people are gonna suddenly notice that things are disappearing back there. Second thing when you're performing this trick is, of course you have uh, your item loaded inside, but you wanna make sure that you look at the viewpoint of the spectator. For example, here you'll notice that this black surface here, people are looking down slightly and the black surface reflects inside so it looks like there's nothing but black surface. But you have to watch out because if you take it, say back here, then it doesn't look right because they should be seeing part of this wood surface through here, but they won't because this is reflecting the black surface. So you have to be careful that from the viewpoint of the spectator, they are seeing all of this surface reflected and there's still background back here. So it looks natural as if they're looking through the box. And of course, the other thing is make sure that they're not high up and they can actually see inside. Now, in order to produce something, for example, this marker here, it has to stick up just a little bit before I can pull it up. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to uh, produce it. So, for that reason, you just have to be careful that you don't allow spectators to look in from the top and see the secret to the trick. And that's the illusion inspired by Mary Poppins. Well, I hope you have fun performing these easy magic tricks for your friends and family. Please give us a like and please subscribe for more video lessons in the future. And by the way, please comment below if there are any tricks that you would like us to teach in future lessons. Thank you for watching. See you next time.